Hey everybody, it's Lebo with Lebo's Pinball Part 12, I think it is, for this uh, crazy uh, getaway restoration job that we're doing here for Pinball Garage up in Hamilton, Ohio. Um, lights, lights, and more lights. Uh, in the last video, I ended it just talking about, hey, you know, current draw and all this, and it's like, you know, we need to talk about lights. A little bit more. I touched on it some. You've seen there. I've I've added in you know some spotlights in a couple areas. There was one little spot where I had a light strip. I've got another light strip here. Um, so you know what is what does that do to the game? Not only just visually, but what does it do like current draw? How do you add these uh, lights? How do you wire them up? How do you connect them? Uh, and then the other thing we're going to talk about today. I'm going to. Uh, Intend in uh, in the video with with uh, finishing finishing things up with the OCD LED board install. There's two boards that we're doing. One uh, handles the GI lights. Uh, the the GIs basically work with a a pulse width modulation and they can flicker sometimes. So that helps with that. Uh, and then the same thing for the the playfield control lights. There's a harshness that can happen a lot um, when it's uh, you know, going around changing lights, and this helps to smooth all out. So let's get started, and uh, hang on, we're going to get a lot to talk about. So you've probably heard a lot about LEDs. Hey, that's a way to go, right, on a lot of games? I think it is, um, for a lot of reasons. Now, of course, there are, there are times, especially on some EM games, where you just can't beat the glow of an incandescent bulb, a nice, clean, well-lit incandescent bulb in EM games, I think looks fantastic, and especially above the play field in certain areas. But even still, in other areas where you're behind plastics and inserts, uh, LEDs is still my preference. But let's talk about, about LEDs on this game a little bit more. So, you know, why do you want to go to LEDs? You know, there's a lot of benefits. I mean, uh, the, they typically run cooler. The bulb's not as hot. That's going to help with things like, you know, uh, causing heat underneath the plastics and, and warping things. Uh, you've got uh, less current draw, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail here in just a moment, but that's going to be better on the overall circuit of the game. Uh, just, you know, it's on, on some of the connectors that is a common problem, especially on GI lights that are on all the time. You, you've seen connectors that, that get pretty crispy and uh, need to be replaced, so that helps take the load off that. Uh, you've got a big variety that you have with bulb, with LED bulbs that you just don't have with incandescent bulbs. Uh, and what I mean by that is you've got all the different colors, like in, what I'm doing on this game where I've got some green and some spots and, and a lot of un, my inserts have actually put a, a colored bulb to match it just because it, to me it kind of helps make it look a little bit better. Uh, and you've also got things like, uh, you know, do you have a frosted bulb like this green bulb in here that you can see is, is frosted that just kind of takes some of the harshness when you look at it directly? Uh, or do you have a clear lens bulb, which is maybe a little hard to see right now? Uh, it's a little bit brighter because you don't have the frosting on there, um, but there's a trade-off with it. It, it. it could put a what you would call like a light hot spot underneath plastics unless it's diffused re really well. Um, but then there's also just a variance in the LED itself. As far as, and I mentioned current draw, it's it, they're not all the same. So you've got light strips. They may draw a little bit different current than, say, like a really nice, uh, you know, nice bright Opmax bulb like we got here. So um, one thing I, I figured I would do is like, well, how much of a difference does it actually make? Let's kind of quantify things. I mean, we've heard that LEDs, you know, they don't draw as much current. So how much of a difference is that really going to be? Well, um, I've set up a little... A little uh, science experiment here, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go um, show you an example of, uh, I've got an incandescent bulb here already ready to go, and then I've got a, a few different bulbs here. I'm gonna, I've got probably the most common that I've used. This is a two, they call it a two SMD. It's a surface mount diode um, bulb, so that, that puts out a nice amount of brightness, certainly a lot brighter than incandescent bulbs, and this, so this is, this is an example of one that I use a lot of. Uh, either in a cool white, a warm white, or um, a sunlight. And here's an example of one of those Opmax bulbs, which is, you know, it's a, a bit brighter. And then here's just a four inch uh, LED strip. So how does all that compare uh, to just an incandescent bulb? Well, let's take a look and uh, get, get some quantified answers here. All right, so if you remember a little bit from one of your science classes <laughs> a long time ago, a little something called Ohm's Law. So Ohm's Law basically says uh, that a voltage 
is going to be equal to the current times the resistance. Or another way to put it is the current is basically going to be whatever the voltage that you've got to work with uh, and whatever resistance there is across that circuit. So the, the, the higher the resistance is, uh, you know, less current is going to flow. And then the inverse of that, of course, if you know, the lower the resistance you have, you know, the higher the current is, is going to be flowing given the same amount of voltage. So what I've done basically here, uh, if you just kind of look over here to the side. So basically I've got this battery pack. I've been using this as kind of a little tester for a lot of lamps for a long time. In fact, I'm surprised these batteries aren't leaking by now. They may actually be now I think about it. Uh, but I tested it and I'm getting like about... 5.7 5.8 volts out of this so it's it's this should be a good solid six volts but it's they're a little old look at that the expiration on this date was march 2015 and today is what is today what the fourth of third of october heck i don't know of 2023 so yeah those expired eight years ago and they're still going good old duracells are known for not being the best i think at least i've heard that rumor. all right let's get back to it so I've set up my uh, my meter, <coughs> excuse me, it's to basically run the current uh, through this bulb, uh, and you know from from the batteries to the bulb through the meter and then back to the batteries. So we'll go ahead and, and turn this on and get this into a milliamp mode, so you can see. Let's see if I can get the glare out of the meter. So here we go. We've got. Just for the, the battery pack that we've got that was, you know, like I said, about 5.7, 5.8 volts. Not the, you know, the strongest. And this bulb is not coming out super bright, honestly. I don't know if it really shows up in the video or not. But uh, the point that I want to do is just, let's get a measurement here. I'm going to turn this, this might help a little bit. Yeah, let's get a measurement uh, of, of the uh, current, I'm sorry, yeah, the current draw that uh, this bulb is, is giving us. And then we are going to switch out to some of the different bulbs and just do a comparison. You know, if I were to have a little stronger voltage over there, we would be seeing higher current draws here just because of that, that Ohm's law that we talked about. It's this, this bulb has got a fixed resistance. And what I could actually do is just check the resistance of each bulb. But that's what I really want to know is really the current draw. So they're just using our meter to be able to tell you this. All right, so there we got about 130 or so milliamps. So... You know, it's a little more than a tenth of an amp. Um, so let's pop this this bulb out. Okay, so here is you know the the Comets 2 SMD bulb, and let's see if we can get this in here. Look how much brighter that is. We're setting at about 35 or so milliamps. So this is you know roughly a fourth or so of the current draw of one of these uh, incandescent bulbs. So really, just that alone, you could say I could you could take four of these bulbs, put them in parallel, and uh, the the total current draw for these would really be you know roughly equivalent to one of these. Actually, a little was that a little bit less? No, it's about, about the same, thereabouts. All right, so let's let's uh, jump over to another example. So here is one of these Opmax bulbs. I like to use them in certain certain situations. They do run a little hotter. Um, and now you're going to see a reason why. So this one's a purple one, and this one's about twice of what that two SMD bulb was. So, um, so that's but it's still it's half of a single incandescent bulb. And here is that four inch um, LED strip. And I'm going to have to unplug my little setup here. And let's plug this in this way. This was just one that I had. I didn't go. Uh, grab several I'll just uh, I'm making an assumption here that it doesn't really matter based on the color uh, but this one's a red one um, and again it's pulling look at that it's 86 milliamps so that's even more um, than that Opmax bulb and so if we had a bigger strip you know they make an 8 inch strip and then they got a 20 inch which I've used 20s uh, that go all the way across the back of the um, kind of the back of the play field underneath the, the that area underneath the uh, back box to kind of light things up in certain games. And uh, yeah, these, these draw a little bit of current. Um, still, compared to a single um, incandescent bulb, uh, you see where it's at, it's still, it's less. So, so with all that in mind, uh, now let's kind of shift back over the game and kind of talk a little bit about adding, adding lights and where we, where we add them and why does it matter? All right, so for this game, uh, like a lot of other WPC games, 
as well as other, other generation games. Uh, the GI lights are basically um, split into a number of different branches. This game's got five different branches. Uh, some, I think some other games might utilize maybe less. I don't know if any of them do more than five. It, five may be the, the maximum, if I remember correctly. Uh, but basically, each branch has got a number of bulbs that's all all wired. But think of it almost almost like a Christmas tree strip of lights. All right. So what what happens with the game is that uh, depending on, on different games, uh, is that the game will control each one of those branches of lights and it will dim them down at certain points of the game, uh, either or maybe turn them completely off uh, to try to get certain effects. And the way that it used to dim it, or that it does dim it, uh, it's not that it used to, but the way that, that, they, that they accomplish the dimming uh, is through something called pulse width modulation. Um, and basically what it's doing is it's basic pulsing the bulbs, you know, com completely on, completely off, completely on, just full voltage off, full volt. But if you do it really fast, um, especially with the the slow uh, onset of, of light that an incandescent bulb does, and then when you turn the voltage off, this is kind of the slow drop of, of the voltage. If you time it just right, you can kind of keep the bulb just sort of kind of halfway, uh, or not just halfway, but just partially lit. And so given the desire of how much you want that lit, it, is correlates to how much of that pulse width modulation. So it may be on for say 70% and then off for 30% and just do that really fast. Well, when you bring LEDs into the picture, LEDs respond so much faster than uh, when you add voltage to it, they, they light up very instant, you know, I say instantaneously. It's still not instant, but it's a lot faster. If you were to slow down, uh, an incandescent bulb and see how it kind of slowly comes on and LED is just more of just kind of instant. So given the LEDs and the older technology of the of the speed of the pulse width modulation is that you get a lot of flicker that you'll see with um, with LEDs. In fact, I'm going to show you something right now. I've got the game set into, let's see if that, okay, I don't see if that's coming across. Let's see if we get something that shows the flicker pretty bad. Hopefully that's coming across in the video. Um, so th basically this is supposed to be the lowest setting of the light on every one of the, of the GI lights, uh, strips. And so, uh, norm what would the, what we should be seeing if we had incandescent bulbs in here is that they would just be just barely lit. Uh, but instead we're just getting this really bad pulsing. Uh, even they are dimmer, but it just looks awful. And so this OCD LED board for the GI will, uh, basically eliminate all this. The way that it's doing is it, the the speed or the rate of doing the pulsing is a whole lot more times per uh, second uh, than the number of times that it did back when this game was originally designed because they're pulsing it so much quicker. Still the same duty cycle, but just so much quicker. Um, it, it smooths this uh, flicker out into our eyes. We don't see this, this flicker. So anyways, that's why we got all these different uh, all these different uh, GI light uh, circuits, you know, the five different branches or whatever. That they're that's why that's why they did that so they could have that control. Let me go ahead and take this flicker off. It's driving me nuts. Let's, there is a in case you haven't ever figured it out in the GI test mode, there is a way where you can control the brightness. Um, on all of the branches all at once, or if you want to do each branch individually, I'll let you do that as well. Okay, so now back to this OCD LED board that we're going to go put in here in a little bit, just a little bit of forward thinking. Um, the circuit is designed to only only handle a certain amount of current on each um, uh, light LED or GI branch. In fact, the game originally comes with a two amp fuse on each one of those branches, so it doesn't really want you to go past two amps at least as far as what that fuse that was originally in with the game. Um, I did have uh, a message from the designer of this board a long time ago, and he said, hey, you know what, you could actually, you're safe enough to go all the way up to four amps on this. You just need to swap out to a four amp fuse. If you're, basically, if you're blowing a two amp fuse and um, you're only using LEDs, and you maybe you add an extra, you know, a light here or there too, and you start popping a, a two amp fuse. It's okay. Just go ahead and you can bump it up to four, and you're still within the the safety margin of the game. That's 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 what I've been told at least. So I have not had any board failures at all. I've bumped them all up to fours, 
Uh, I have had several of the two amp fuses on other games in the past blow just because they were just a little bit overloaded. So uh, that, that kind of gets back to why is it important that when we went and measured all those, uh, you know, the, the current draw on all the bulbs, if you can imagine, you know, each bulb, what it, what is it doing? And when, and when you're switching out to, to just your basic two SMD bulbs everywhere, it's going to be a, a, you know, basically about a fourth of the current draw of what an incandescent bulb would do. And when you, uh, if you exchange those bulbs with some of the little hotter bulbs, then you start increasing that a little bit. But if you start adding things like this uh, on top of it, then you have to kind of take that in consideration that you are going to be pulling a little bit more current. So, um, I'm going to flip, uh, kind of shift gears here and flip the play field over and show you how I am hooking these up. Um, and there's a, there's a couple of things here, a couple of different preferences, but uh, let's take a look. So here is just one of the, the branches of the LEDs. You see this, this orange wire here, the solid orange, and then a white with orange stripe. That is uh, power that's coming in from, uh, you know, the, the power driver board, basically. And it's feeding directly into this one uh, socket here. And of course, you see these little yellow wires that are coming out and then going different places. It's basically this, it's feeding this one bulb and then going off parallel to this, going uh, to some other sockets. I know it's not going to that one because see, this one's brown and then a white with brown. That is, I know, a different GI circuit. So these two, these two, two uh, lamps are actually controlled on two separate um, uh, different branches. So at, at different points of the game, you know, the, one may be on, the other's off, or, you know, some kind of blend of that or whatever. Anyway, so let's kind of stick with this one that's here for this, um, I think it's, I'm looking at the right one. Yeah, for this 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 orange and the white with orange. So if you were to follow a couple of wires coming off of this, and uh, this is just what I happen to, to choose just because it was convenient. Um, there's a number of different ways that you can actually uh, connect um connect the wires into this. Let me actually go around here and grab something I meant to grab ahead of time. Well, if you go over here and look even at my little setup here. So you've got alligator clips. Uh, that's one way that, you know, that comes like with comments lights where you can take these clips in and, you know, it's a quick way to go hook it up. I, it, to me, it's a temporary way. It's, it's for something, if you think you may be undoing it at some point or if you're, or if you're especially wanting to kind of try it out on different, uh, different things to say, Hey, let me hook this up to see how it looks. I may want to try something different. That's a good way to go ahead and hook that up. There's other different ways to actually um, connect it. And here's some, some other examples that we're... I should have opened this up. There we go. Well, you've seen the alligator clips already. Another way that some people do is in exchange of uh, a certain bulb, you can... If it's a bayonet, you can take this one in, in place of a bayonet bulb, or if it's a wedge style instead of a wedge style bulb, you can plug this in. And it just basically acts as a power takeoff where you can go feed it to other things. I typically don't really use these. Um, and occasionally I'll use an alligator clip for the reasons I mentioned earlier. But what I typically like to do is I will cut with those wires or unsolder it off of the alligator clips and just salvage that little bit of that wire that has a connector and that's exactly what I did here because it, to me, it's a more permanent attachment. It's just something that is a little more secure. And then I'll take like a, like a little clamp or something to kind of hold it down. So what you're seeing here, we were just talking about current draw and all this. Okay. Thank goodness we're using LEDs because what I've done is I've really added a, a bit of load, uh, potential load sources, um, to the orange and, uh, uh, white with orange stripe, uh, GI circuit. So, uh, in addition to what's what's uh, wired right here and coming off over to the side, what normally would have just gone uh, just let's see just to this lamp. Um, what I have done is I've actually you know, this is an additional lamp that the game never had just because it was lightening up an area that I wanted to add a little bit more light to. If I flip the play field over, you'd see what I'm talking about. But just trust me that that's another area that I've added. Um, and then actually follow this little yellow wire. There, there was another socket that I added this into. Again, it was, I was trying to light up, add a little bit more light. So there's two extra sockets that, uh, that are going to that, uh, that GI circuit. And then on top of it, I have added in this little, um, you know, this, that little wire jumper or whatever, that plug. And from there, I've got a splitter going into three directions. So one is coming up here and it is, 
Uh, let's see, where are we going? Oh, that's going to one of the spotlights that I've got got up at the uh, up at the top right is where it is. And then over here, it's also feeding in. Um, we got to the, the donut heaven. It's feeding that. And let's see, I'm forgetting where the other one is going. But anyways, my point is, is that we have added one, two, three, uh, four, five, five more light sources on, on top or load sources on top of this. So um, that's still, what, I'm not having problems with it. If, if uh, you've got, the, you know, the OCD LED board will handle that. Um, it's, it's probably kind of pushing maybe a little bit of limit on that circuit, maybe. Um, but that, that's the way, those are the different ways that you can actually connect uh, these, you know, the LED whatever sockets or any add-ons, you, you've got those different ways where you can actually connect them up to it. And um, anyways, I just figured I'd show, show you how that's done. So for the slings, um, you know, the, the extra lights that I put underneath those little uh, signs, as well as the spotlights, the way I accomplished it this time is just, you know, here's the sling, you know, the, here's the sling coil that we talked about earlier um, in the previous video. And, um, here's two lights, two light sockets that are already there. So you can see where I've already added in this little connector, um, you know, tying it into that, into that uh, socket. It really, a lot of times it's not going to matter as far as polarity is involved. However, I did have a problem one time before where uh, a light wasn't coming on. I ended up having to reverse the polarity and it fixed it. So that was kind of unexpected. But anyways, I've got this tied in uh, here. It's going into a branch into, uh, you know, two different ones. Again, that's for that, that, One's for the sign, one's for the spotlight on the sling. And then I did the same thing uh, over here. It looks kind of like a real mess. And by the way, to to get this uh, hooked up, you know, to, there it is right there. Uh, to, to tie into that, you can just take the screw out here and just, you know, pull the socket out to where it's a little easier to get to. Uh, but that's, that's where I've tied that one in. Uh, that trough light that I have uh, going in, here's where the wire is going through the hole underneath the plate, through the play field. Uh, that's actually tied in also to that same branch. Um, so anyways, now it's time to start shifting over into getting this uh, GI OCD all hooked up. So in a previous video, I was showing how I was doing the battery relocation here for the MPU. And I had gone ahead and uh, mounted that board that, oh, look, I got a nut that's hanging out there. It's weird. Um, I had, had put in uh, the board, but I had not wired it up. So today we're gonna go ahead and wire it up and I'll show you what the difference is. Now that you saw that flicker from earlier, um, we'll we'll see what it does after that. So I've jumped, in, jumped ahead a little bit on getting this OCD LED board put in. I didn't wanna just bore you with every little uh, install detail, but I will still go over just kind of the basics. And if you ever install one of these on your own, you gotta follow the instructions of what comes with it. It's very detailed, but it's not at all complicated. So here's this board that gets added in. And what you do is you replace the original uh, data cable that's going from the power driver board over to the, the MPU. Uh, and what's happening is that it's, it's picking up the signal from the MPU and it's also feeding uh, the, the GI board. Now what else is happening is that this yellow cable, that's basically, it comes all the way down here in the cabinet, coming off the transformer. Here's where all these, uh, like this, the power that supplies the GI comes in all the way through this yellow cable and enters into the, this, uh, the GI OCD board. This uh, is the connector that actually will then come over to this little, they call it a breakout board. So what it's doing, it looks like a mess really, <laughs> and it is by the way. It ends up being a little bit of a mess of wires here. But this goes into one connector and there's two other connectors on the other side that are all of the GI strings. And so the, basically what's coming into here, all these blue wires is then feeding back into the actual game, into the all the GI lights in the play field, as well as on the back box. Uh, in addition to that, there's also one connector that comes off here, which honestly I can't recall what that, that does, but that also is fed in here. Um, to this little breakout box. And then you've also got a ground wire. But that's basically the install. Uh, and now let me go ahead and put things back together and I'll turn it on. Okay, with all of the GI lights completely turned off right now. Uh, so here is the low light setting. And you know, before that was flickering really bad. And so if I just pass from, you know, completely low to fully bright, you can see it just kind of gently brights, brightens up. And so there it is, full brightness. And going back down, you just see it just kind of dims out. So, um, 
you know, the, again, the difference before is that you, you're dealing with a lot of flicker and then that smooths that out. So what I'm gonna do now is get the, uh, the actual play field controlled. Uh, I'm talking about like all of the, uh, the inserts. I'm gonna put in the OCD LED card for it. And then I'll show you kind of a, a before and after on that as well. The OCD LED board that controls the play field, uh, you know, it's a play field control lights, all the inserts and everything. This is now installed, and, and again, I don't want to go into all the details of uh, installing. If you ever get one of these, just follow the instructions. But the basic idea is these cables right here, this, this yellow one, the, this one and this one, there's one pin here and a bunch of others there. And then the, you see the red right here. There's several there and then one there. Um, basically, those four connectors were normally going into... Uh, this whole, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, this group of connectors. Uh, it it kind of didn't even matter which ones it went into uh, over here for the for the small connectors here, the 100, um, the point 100 pitch uh, connectors. This is the point 156, the larger ones. Um, they went into the, these two that were over here. But here's the basic idea. You disconnect those cables from the power driver board. And that's what's, but that's what's sending the signal uh, to, um, let's see if I get this right, unless I'm getting things backwards. That is basically, uh, the, con I think I am getting it backwards. This is, I think the connection to the actual, uh, lights itself. And it, what you're doing is you're intercepting the connection. Let me just simplify this. So I don't say it wrong. You're intercepting the signal that's coming either from, yeah, it's coming from the power driver board. I'm getting this all backwards to these cables and instead you're passing them down through this going through this board which will speed up that whole uh pulse pulse width modulation cycle uh to blink them a whole lot faster per second than what they're currently doing that way it will make that um you know that jittery look just disappear to our eyes the only other basically the only other connection that's happening here is just a ground connection which it picks up there's like a little Z connector here. Where, so this connector is already going here. You put in this little Z connector and it'll tee off of it. So that's basically the install of that. Let's go see what it looks like. In fact, I'm going to show you a before and after. So here we go. Okay, so here's the Playfield control lights before installing the OCD LED board. You can see there's just kind of a harshness. Um, there's a flicker in some, some cases. Some of them you can see, I think there might be a little bit of a voltage leaking through, meaning that when the light comes on and then goes out, you can see it's still kind of a little bit of a ripple. Those look kind of, kind of funky. So it should help smooth that out. And here it is with the OCD LED card installed. So it's a subtle effect and, uh, you know, kind of depending on games, it sometimes has a bigger effect than others. Uh, but this one, what it, what I've noticed is that it does kind of help smooth out some of the lights. You get hit with a lot of the, the flicker during, you know, normal play over a long time and, and it does kind of get a little bit harsh. And this, this really kind of helps smooth, smooth all that out. So, uh, that's basically it for this video. We've gone over a lot of stuff. Um, thanks for watching. And again, I appreciate all the comments. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fun thing to do and fun thing to share. So, uh, we're getting real close to the finish line. I've got um, a couple other things to do in this game and, and one little project that I'm going to try working on. Once I get it together, then I'm, and hopefully it turns out pretty cool, then I'll share it with you. All right. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.